Hey D-Racers, I want to share with you a new tool that I built for everybody so you can get a chance to play around and see if this is going to help you in the game. So following this access to that detailed furlong data that no longer is currently available, uh, it, it sent me down a rabbit hole of trying to see what can I extract having so much more visibility in my data. This reminded me back of card counting. I used to do some card counting at blackjack tables and there's a couple different methodologies that work really well for that that I thought might be able to transpose over to derace. What I found, not so much. But what I did find was there's a lot of mistakes that I think almost everybody or everybody is making that I wanted to go over today and share with you how this tool works. So at the bottom of that tab of the detailed furlong analysis, there's a new one called a manager score. And to make sense of this, when you bet a one Dirk race versus a bet a, a four Dirk race, obviously there's greater payouts. And if you're studying your horse profitability or PPR, the concern that I have is you do not want to run your fastest races on a one Dirk race. You want to run your fastest races on a four Dirk race. So the theory was, if you were incredibly lucky and you ran all of your slow races when you bet one Dirk, and then you broke your world records paces when you ran the four dirk, you would in theory get the maximum value of your horse. So if that makes sense, get your bad out of the way. They're going to happen no matter what, so you might as well bet small on those. So what I did was I wanted to create a tool, and that's what this is going to go and do, where it analyzes what is your PPR of your horse. What would have been your PPR if you just bet one dirk, just bet two dirk, three deck, four dirk, and then also I created two different examples for best case and worst case. So let me show you what this looks like. So up here on the top left, I'm going to type in Skonderts, so 1418. And what this is going to do is it's going to show me on Turf 6's Skonderts PPR, and in in, I think this goes back to June 1st. So it, uh, his PPR was 70.72. Now, if I bet just one Dirk bets, I would have made less money. I would have made 0.39. Because uh, if I bet two Dirk or higher, I would have made more money. So the fact that I was randomly betting or allowing myself to bet on random Dirk values, I in fact hindered some of my possible gains. So what I have here is this, this flat-based betting means if you only bet one Dirks, twos, threes, and fours, how well did you perform? And I'm calling that that manager score. So here in this example, this is taking what could I have made if I was betting exclusively four Dirk races compared to what did I actually yield. And so I yielded less than half. Now, of course, four Dirk races don't fill up all the time, but I just wanted to share with this with the community. As we start to get more and more users that enter the game, you shouldn't be racing those low Dirk values if you have a good horse. Unless your goal is to make uh, pennies per day, I'm here to make sure that I can hopefully win more and more money. And I'm guessing you're the same. Especially, too, if you have a bot. There's really no point in setting your ranges from 1 to 4, because if you do that, you're essentially allowing the bot and D-Race to pick the order in which you are going to be betting in. You have this randomized luck based off of what tracks show up. Now, down below, I have my best case and worst case scenario. And what this means is, since June 1st, if I go back, and if I made the luckiest bets, if I bet four Dirk for every single time I would podium, and if I bet one Dirk for every single time I did not podium, Skonder would have had the possibility of yielding 3.39 Dirk per race. Consequently, if I bet four Dirk on every single time I lost, and if I bet one Dirk every single time I won, Skonder's PPR would have been a negative 1.44. So there's a lot of danger to allow this randomization to control your betting strategies. And that's why I think if you've ever had just a solid day of nothing but podiums, but you feel like your wallet has not increased anything, or even worse, if it's dropped, it might be because of this. So then what I have down below is what is the score against perfection? And that's that best case scenario. So that randomization, Skandert would only have pulled off 21% of what I could have done perfectly. So as I switch over to, let's say, seven furlongs on turf, same thing. Here, I did outperform one in two Dirk-ish, but it would have made more sense for me to pin them down to Dirk's threes and fours. My manager score, again, not so great. So as I bounce around and take a look at this, these kind of results are quite consistent. <clears throat> so let's say, if I'm going to switch over, I know, uh, let's say, Fash, he seems to run on synthetics recently take a look at him. So Fash, like his PPR is 0.11, would have been better off of uh, racing on different tracks. Now, what also is nice about this is let's say you have a donkey or a questionable donkey. <clears throat> 
So for me, that's my Golda. So when I take a look at Golda, this is the realized PPR. She lost me money. And then even, even if I had the best case scenario, which is incredibly difficult to do, she might have netted me at 0.83. That's not very good. So then if I switch to my 11s, again, best case scenario, which is incredibly difficult to do, I would have only netted almost 0.3. So now, as you start to have these horses that you're running, and PPR is not necessarily everything. There's a lot of detailed analysis that you need to do to figure out that reaction speed and stamina, but profitability is why we're all here. So I would advise you, use this tool. Take a look at your stable and start to isolate where should you race your horses a little bit more. And if you do have a bot, which I highly recommend a bot to everybody, you might want to consider changing your strategy. And rather than allowing that range of having randomization pick your betting strategy, it might be safer to pin it down to a one to two Dirk range at best. Now, my hope is, is as the community gets bigger and as we release more and more and we get more people to this one, we'll all have a better chance of pinning down a Dirk value that makes sense for our horses. And I think that this gives us an opportunity to allow some of the donkeys to show up and start racing because once you lock yourself in with a good horse for me I now only want to race four dirt values and that means most likely Skandert's not going to show up on any one dirt races giving people a chance to test their lengths on turf without having to race Skandert so I think that this could be a good community benefit the people that have the uh, good horses that you want to try to make more money uh, this is a good strategy and this might be a way that we're going to naturally start to thin the field but Lots more to come from this one. I'm going to continue to tinker around with these tools, but I thought that this was an interesting thing to share. So if you're looking for profitability, if you're looking for a way to assess, do you have a donkey or do you have a horse, you might want to use this tool. I'll share this on the links down below, and if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment or hit me up on Discord or on Twitter. Thanks, guys.